<laughs> Warning, this podcast contains violence, sexuality, gore, and other horrible and disturbing things. Listener discretion is advised. Also, the hosts of this venture are ignorant dipshits, so please do not take anything they say as fact. And enjoy the show. Now, are you sitting comfortably? Good. Then we'll begin. Today we had 15 homicides and 63 violent crimes, as if that's the way it's supposed to be. The atoms in your left hand probably came from a different star than your right hand. There is a basic human right to be fucked up! A second plane now has crashed into the other tower of the World Trade Center. Put chemicals in the water that turn the friggin' frogs gay! The defendant shall be incarcerated for the rest of her natural life with no possibility of parole. You are not machines! You are not cattle! You are men! We were somewhere around Barstow, on the edge of the desert, when the drugs began to take hold. Hello, occultists. This is a Cult of Veritatis podcast. I am Ood Gallifrey. Sage Murray. Richard Bigley. And in studio with us, Squishy. And Sprout. Okay, welcome to this extra special holiday episode where we will ruin Christmas for you. But first, we have to have a drink. So, what's your poison? <coughs> uh, today, we are drinking Dairyland brand eggnog. What kind? Like, there's a classic eggnog, and then they got like an extra creamy or something like that. What, what type is no, this? This, this, like this is the classic. Yeah. That's a yes. Where's she mine? Just Where's grabbed mine? Is this mine? It's right there. <laughs> Considering right she just grabbed it for me, that was a yes. I'm putting Fireball in mine. <laughs> I'd like to try that too, because I mean, it's the fucking amazing. Who the wants, non-alcoholic wants a one is very creamy, but I think the Fireball will add yeah. some spice and seasoning. Like <laughs> <laughs> I like to water down my. Um, Dairyland uh, eggnog with three percent milk because it's way too. I like the cr- I like the creaminess, but I don't like the um, the right? syrupiness. Oh my gosh! Can I have some? Okay, it's yeah, so the fireball. fireball. Like, okay, on it. Sorry to start it off, but it it was at like a three. Mm. It's at a seven now. Yes. Yes, it it mm. certainly. You know, I adds that edge that you need on that eggnog. It was just but too bland, no. too creamy, you know, for I don't know enjoyment. Though. though the Costco eggnog is pretty good. I like the Costco yes. eggnog. I'm 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 I think with a I prefer eggnog, that eggnog with a little bit of milk rather than that. I don't know. I <laughs> That's too much milk. This fireball burning my mouth like matches my nihilism a little more, so <laughs> <laughs> but okay, the, the fireball with eggnog is like what I drink during the holiday season. Mm. That's like a, that's like my jam. Yeah. I like fireball with root beer. Mm. Fireball with anything is delicious. My favorite yeah, root beer mix sounds. root beer drink fi- is, yeah. is 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 um oh fireball root beer float yeah. rye and ginger. Oh, we can't see <laughs> that's my favorite. Fireball and Dr. Pepper. I started Pepper drinking it in Belgium mm, Dr. Pepper. because I was. Yeah, I started drinking Canada Dry Rye, Canada Dry <laughs> with Canadian rye. So, so oh, Canada. in Belgium <laughs> because you, you were a poet. You didn't I even was, know it. I was definitely because I was definitely embracing the Belgian culture and drinking Belgian drinks and not drinking something that tasted like home. Did your shoes feel a little more wooden? Crown Royal <laughs> and Canada Dry. Excuse me. Yeah, I, I mean, it's t- it's a Without the fireball, it's a bit too rich for my taste. Like I like I like my milkshakes thin. Like I like them able to go travel up the straw unabounded. That's called melted ice cream. Yes. yes. Exactly. That's not a milkshake. Sorry. That's they in <laughs> I like melted ice cream. That's Please what give me a they cup of milk. Said. But with the I fireball with this burning in my throat and chest, I, I'm gonna bump it up to like an eight out of ten. Yeah, I kinda like it. Uh, helps helps you on a cold I wintry like, day. I like when things burn in my chest. Me too. Oh, I'm yeah. not sure what that's a euphemism for. <laughs> oh is it you don't need to know. weed? 
What? I don't smoke weed. <laughs> for some I, I, honestly, I was thinking for some type candle of like, wax. For some type of like fire swallowing kink. I'm not sure. I, I was thinking candle wax. Okay, yes. Ooh. <laughs> I have someone who wants to try that. With Be careful me. when you play actually, out there, boys actually, and girls. Make sure you get kink candle wax because it burns at a much lower temperature. It's know Christmas, what there's doing. probably plenty yeah. of candles out there for everybody. They know what they're doing. I do don't so don't good use thing they do don't use the ones <laughs> at the dollar store they use no. cheap oil that burns at a very very high temperature very quickly and it will cause yeah, second sure degree burns. beeswax either. and beeswax, beeswax burns, burns, burns very hot, very hot. Yeah. and don't burn your house down <coughs> while you're doing that either that would no. be a very <laughs> bad idea that would be sad, sad but yeah. have fun but have fun be yes. safe be and very have fun. careful be safe and have fun yep don't tell your parents. Your, break. your holiday, do, your holiday message from the OV Pod peeps. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Keep that Christmas tree out of your ass. Uh, I don't care. I need jingle bells right now. What you say? Yeah. You can jingle my bells, dude. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy, I'll ma- I'll be extra jolly. Yeah. Only oh if gosh. someone jingles mine. What? Yes. Oh boy, uh, there's uh, there's euthanism on top of euthanism. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Make my nose red. Anyway. <laughs> I rate it one boob out of uh, over no boob, so it's great. I don't oh. know. You're dividing like by boobs. zero. <laughs> Divide by zero. You're, error. Gonna, you're gonna wreck the podcast. Sprout, I love you. <laughs> That's awesome topic. What are you gonna do? <laughs> I'll rate it an eight of ten. I'm just thinking about boobs because it was milky. <laughs> <laughs> Well, how do you think of these? <laughs> <laughs> Having had nursed a child wow. for two and a half years. Richard milky was squirting milk different. all over the studio. <laughs> <laughs> than, than like well, oh, no, for <laughs> sure. I just was like, boobs. I like boobs. Mm-hmm. Boobs mm-hmm. produce milk. Th- mm-hmm. That was milk. Yep. Yeah, it was okay, just yeah. a really tangent, okay? Yeah. Sprout. <laughs> I'm yep. going to say this again. I love you. <laughs> I love me too. <laughs> <laughs> Call back to the fascist propaganda episode. For a short time in 2017, milk became a white supremacist symbol. It did, indeed, yeah. yes. It was oh, goodness. weird. Anyway, Santa Claus. <laughs> <laughs> ho, ho, hoes. Indeed. Hello. Hello. Hello, little folks. Do you know who I am? Just. Yes. Why, you've heard of me every Christmas. Who is it you say? Hush, close all the doors, and I'll tell you a secret. I'm old Santa Claus. Perhaps you are surprised to find me hiding in this phonograph, for I'm right here inside. Well, I'll tell you all about it if you'll give me your word that you won't mention it to a soul. You've often seen pictures of Santa Claus, haven't you? With his great big white whiskers halfway down to the ground and his ruddy red cheeks and his jolly old smile. Well, I don't look like that just now and I'll tell you why. All night long, I've been climbing in and out of chimneys, leaving toys and the candy and all such wonderful presents for all the little folks. My whiskers are full of soot, and my beautiful red robe with its trimming of white is as black as black can be. I didn't want you to see me looking like that, so when I heard you coming, I hid in this phonograph, but I must be off now, for I still have a few presents for some little friends of mine. Let me see. Here is a toy steamboat. And a toy calio. And a little toy piano. And now I wish you all a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. But before I leave, I'm going to sing for you my favorite song. Did you ever hear Santa Claus sing? Well, you're going to hear him now. Jingle bell, jingle bell, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride in Santa's Christmas sleigh. 
Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride in St. Christmas sleigh. Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye, children. Get up here. Jingle bell, jingle bell, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride in St. So I thought we started off the Santa Claus episode by giving a short overview of like our Christmas traditions surrounding Santa Claus. So how did your family treat Santa Claus showing up, if he did at all? Well, my family was big into Santa Claus, but my but my Santa Claus would give us the stockings, and my parents would give us like the good presents. Yeah, which fair enough. Yeah, because they were paying for everything. Yeah. Well, and why would you want some made-up guy getting all the fucking credit for the gift that was really awesome exactly. that you bought and spent a lot of fucking money on? You know. Oh, yeah. well, the one like- thing is though is I mean I think Santa's very much a class traitor though because <laughs> all the rich kids always got better presents. Yeah. You mm-hmm. know? Okay. Well, like with. Like, I have a f- f- five-year-old son, and we don't talk about Santa at all with him. We haven't said, like, anything <coughs> about him, but I think he thinks that Santa's coming. But we're still going to give him the good gifts. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, probably, like, other kids have talked to him about it and all that. Right. Like, I remember those conversations in, like, early school, like... First talking about Santa, and then, like, come second or third grade, some dick would be in class saying, like, Santa doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Yeah. But, like... My kid will probably be that dick when I end up with that with a kid, you know? that's (laughs) Mine, too. My my kid will be like, what's a Santa Claus? Oh, that doesn't sound realistic. Do you realize how many people there are in the world? (laughs) And stop uh, all of them with for one night. That's completely preposterous. Okay, but also my kid's five, so, you know. Yeah, Yeah. Yeah. my kid's hypothetical. Right. (laughs) I don't know. My my parents... Your hypothetical kid was, like, my kid at five, but he is, like... He's five. He's five, okay. My parents <laughs> leaned into it hard. Like, uh, they were similar to Sage's with the gifts, where they would put, like, the, the gifts from Santa in the stocking, and they'd be kind of, like, they'd be cheaper gifts compared to the ones they got them. But yeah. they would take, like, they would make footprints with dirt leading from <laughs> one door of the house to, like, the middle of the house where we have the tree. And they, <laughs> they, they, and they would, like, uh, take little bites out of the cookies and drink some of the milk. And they they would, like... It's like they're staging a crime scene, except for Santa Claus, like, eating cookies and leaving presents behind. Wait, yep. Ood, are you saying that Santa is your parents? Yeah. <laughs> what? 100%. Uh, my, my parents would also write, like, a sh- like a shaky handwriting letter because Santa was cold. Yeah, growing up, <laughs> that, that happened with me. And, uh, you know, we had a tradition when we're kind of winding down. <laughs> the kids were winding down for the night for Santa to come. Yeah. Um, uh, the kids first you would start with reading uh, the night before Christmas yeah. then you would have Kate put out the cookies and milk and then we would put out reindeer food too oh yeah we, uh, we had to go sprinkle the reindeer food and then in the morning there'd be little hoof prints on the lawn and mm-hmm. and yeah the cookies were half eaten the drink the milk was half drunk but there was enough left in there to say hey somebody was here but they didn't have time to eat or drink all of it like the milk I am also half drunk <laughs> Um, the other thing, too, is I would get one gift from my parents and then gifts from family members like aunts, uncles and yeah. stuff. And then every other gift was from Santa Claus. Oh, really? Yep. And I also had a Ukrainian Santa Claus. Oh, yeah. We had U- U- Ukrainian Santa Claus, yep. too. Yep. And he was separate from the regular Santa Claus? Yeah, because he, he like was. Ukrainian Christmas. <laughs> yeah. Me and my mom call him Chris Kringlovich. Oh, boy. Chris Kringlovich. <laughs> we just call him Ukrainian Santa. Yeah. Yep, yep. We, uh, in my household, it was always, uh, we, Santa would bring gifts in the, into the stockings, which would be like, you know, little cheaper items and a lot of like, you know, Christmas oranges and nuts and candy and stuff like that. Yeah. And, uh, when we woke up, we were allowed to open the, the stockings uh, when we got <laughs> up, yep. but we, we weren't allowed to bother the parents. Nope. So like, you know, as, uh, as, uh, in my teens, that was still very much the rule. And, uh, you know, so I'd have to, like, sit down and watch, like, The Wall or something like that yeah. until, uh, you know, until my, my parents got up. Mm-hmm. And, uh, anyway, so that was, that was kind of my life. And then, you know, Santa would bring a present. And then, you know, there'd be presents from all the other family and then the parents. 
uh, we alternated. Uh, it was like uh, three years kind of thing. It was like one year we'd go to my, my father's parents, and the next year we'd go to like my mother's parents, and then we'd stay at home mm. you know, the next year. And then, then the year after that we'd go to the father's parents, and it was just this continuous thing. And uh, yeah, so that was that was the the Christmas in uh, Little Richard Bigley's household. Mm. Christmas in my house was we would go to my mom's par my mom's parents for uh, New Year's Eve or Christmas Eve. Well, Christmas Eve, um, which was three hours away from where we lived. Um, but we had Christmas morning back at mm. our house um, on Christmas morning. So my Christmas Eves were often spent driving in a car. My experience with Santa would be my parents telling me that that red light on top of that cell tower was Rudolph. Oh. <laughs> oh. 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 my gosh. Yeah. Womp womp. Yeah. Though the NORAD Santa Tracker was always fun to watch. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. right. Oh, there's yeah. now there's now a Google one. Yeah, Google yeah. with yeah, Google. Yeah, it's not Google, the same. The, the Santa a, Tracker partnered with Google, I think, or Google bought them, or but something. You, but you need like the Santa Track NORAD Sa- Santa Tracker with the guy in like the Canadian Forces uniform on TV telling you where Santa is around the oh, world. Yeah. You know, because yeah. it was it was much more authentic. I think. Oh, than absolutely. Watching like an animated GIF on yeah. on Google. Yeah, yeah. GIF. No, it's GIF. You, it's yep. GIF graphics interchange format. It's GIF. Sorry, it's you GIF. don't you don't watch Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah, but they're wrong. <laughs> but the guys that he's wrong it, though. He's, he's wrong. Was, he's he, wrong. You don't have to be. You, the inventor isn't always right. Exactly. Close the gate because the dogs will get out. <laughs> Fuck you. Dodges. Well, Dodges. Jet out. They will jet out. Yeah. <laughs> this I'm is dying the, on this hill. <laughs> this is the classic death of the author, life of the author dilemma. Do we trust the author's interpretation of their own creation, or do we go with the interpretation of the audience? The eternal question of all time. Santa Claus. <laughs> Well, so Santa Claus, I believe he has to have a number of mystical powers in order to accomplish what he does. So at this time, there's about 1.9 billion people, sorry, billion children in the world. Children under the age of 12 that would likely um, get a present from Santa Claus. Um, now, <coughs> Santa would have to have some type of overknowledge, some type of sense to know what all these children are doing every day. So... Say he took notes every day about each of these 1.9 billion children. If he took five seconds per child to write down a note, whether they're naughty or nice, it would take 100,000 days per day to write down. 100,000 days per day. Yep. Yeah, so if if he took notes on whether all these 1.9 children were naughty or nice, 1.9 billion children were naughty or nice, It would take him 100,000 days per day to make notes. So he doesn't have time to make all those notes, which means he has to have have some kind of psychic sense of what all these children are doing, whether it be bad or good at all times. Uh, He also has to have time manipulation. Uh, He has to visit hundreds of millions of homes in one 24-hour period. Now, he could either manipulate time and freeze things, or he could be going at a very high speed, but if he was going at a high speed, he would have to have some sort of speed force control, because if he hit anything at that high speed, it would be destroyed, so he has to have very fine control over that. Like, near speed of light kind of kind of thing, to slow time down to reach, like... No, I, I think that's fair. I, I really yeah. think that that's probably what it is. Like he can't himself control time. Yeah. But his speed is so quick mm. that that our perception yeah. of of Santa, uh, you know, d- defies you know like the the, the physics yeah. or but whatever you know. Per- perhaps he's an entity that's on another plane that is able to manifest. Physically that time. here, like like he's a fourth dimensional being, yeah. where he exists kind of outside of our linear perception of yes. time, yeah. and so for how we can walk forwards or backwards, he can travel through time forwards or backwards yeah. because um, he's like the outside of our Potter? like three dimensional space, existing in a fourth dimensional like realm. The what the night bus in Harry yeah. Potter or the oh, yeah. cat bus in, in My Neighbor Totoro? Yep. Yep. I'm begging you, please read another book. <laughs> I will not. <laughs> uh, he also has to have some kind of like badass magic or tech like say he has to deliver toys to all these 1.9 billion children Mm -hmm. um 
for my calculations, he would need about 160 Titanic's worth of weight of toys fitting in that sled, fitting in that sack. So he has to have some kind of super high magic or tech in order to fit all those toys inside of that sack and for the sled to be able to carry like 160 Titanic's worth of weight. You mean like Hermione Granger's bag? Ah! Ah! Or Mary Poppins' bag? Mary Poppins, there you go. Yes. Fuck fine. Well, uh, it's I will like, not read another book. Or a bag of holding. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's like Arthur C. Clarke, uh, you know, what he said in he his, his three laws, you know, any sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't think it's magic. I think it's just advanced tech. Yep. You know, dude lives in the North Pole. What do you think he's doing up there all year? You know, he's, you know, r and some pretty cool shit, you know? Yeah, and it, it's, uh, it's, it's Marvel canon that Thor's world is ruled by technology and not magic. Like, their technology is so advanced that it appears like magic. Um, he al Santa also has some kind of body manipulations. Now, ex Richard was talking about before, about how all these rich kids get, like, so many big presents. Some of these kids get cars, some of them get pets. And a lot of them live in homes that have high, expensive security systems with armed guards. So Santa has to be able to either turn invisible or incorporeal or be able to stretch himself to get into locked areas and sneak around armed guards. I know. I think it's maybe like Mrs. Uh, Richard Bigley when she plays Skyrim, where, <laughs> uh, you know, as the Khajiit, she's like sneaking and she pickpockets the entire Imperial Guard or whatever. But if the Imperial Guard <laughs> catches her while she's, uh, you know, pickpocketing, she goes back to the last save, the save she made before she started pickpocketing the guard, and then picks pockets them again. Yeah. And, and so maybe that's it, is he's just like, you know, rewind, fast forward time, and then if he yeah. fucks up, well, he just rewinds it and just does it again, you know? Exactly, or like yeah. like on oh. Doctor Strange, where he's going up to like Darmamu or whatever. Yeah. Darmamu, I keeps, am here to bargain. I am here to bargain. And then he just gets annihilated, yeah. Yeah. comes back again, I am here to bargain. And, you know, they just keep over and over again, you know? Maybe. Well, like, this is really just a Marvel episode in disguise, isn't it? <laughs> I think so, yeah. Let's stop giving them money. Well, and he's absolutely magical, like... Um, like the one uh, part in The Night Before Christmas says, and laying his finger aside of his nose and giving a nod up the chimney, he rose. So he, he just rises up the chimney. He's not like climbing back up it or anything. Yeah. Uh, he also has, has to have some degree of mind control. Now, he gets into all these houses, travels to houses all around the world. He appears on millions of roofs. He's flying through thousands of miles of air, yet nobody spots him. There are insomniacs out there. There are people who are working the night shift. There are security cameras. There are all these things that could observe him, yet he's never caught on any of them. So yes, have Maybe yeah. he's not a thing. Hey, 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 hey. I know, whoa, how whoa, could whoa. I say something so crazy and so controversial? <laughs> I am speechless. <laughs> I'm sorry, not sorry? Sorry, I'm going to continue like Sage didn't just utter I'm that I'm too off high off for go. this bullshit. Off you go, my, my love. <laughs> he also have, so has to have some kind of hyper-intelligence. He has to keep track <laughs> of billions of children, whether they're bad or good. Like we already said, he doesn't have time to write any of this down, so he has to keep track of it in his head. All these children, what they want, whether they deserve it or not, how to get into their house, like what each thing he has to do specific to each child, he has to keep that all stored in his head. He has Fucking to remember man. everyone's passcode to their keypad well, in their just house. just like MySQL Every database or something. Every single one all. of them. The yeah, and he, he never sets off any alarms. Either he gets past them or he knows the code. Well, no, I what was he does. looking for my crochet hook, well, but it was he, in my hand. He hands. goes out onto the lawn of the house and he sets up his like rose such a ladder <laughs> and he climbs up <laughs> this ladder yeah. and then into the chimney he goes. That's how that row goes, you know. Yeah. They rose such a clatter. Oh, oh. Yeah, yeah. And maybe the ladder is the technology which allows him to bypass all this Ooh. shit. Yes. I don't know. Well, and and this maybe it was <laughs> boobs. It was boobs, <laughs> definitely and, the and boobs. Yes, remember this because he does know where all the naughty girls live. <laughs> yeah. Oh my. He has to remember such I'd specific gifts. Santa. Hot like, mm. I want this bath bomb from. Some Lush. call him Daddy Santa. <laughs> I mean, Santa. I feel sorry. 
I feel That's sorry for kid. the guy because for somebody who knows where the naughty girls live, he only comes once a year, though. Oh my goodness! <laughs> Not my kink, but he I'll knows if you've been bad or good. <laughs> to be good for goodness' sake. Can um, we get a picture of Ood in a like Santa Claus <laughs> costume? Because that'd be fucking cool. Merry Christmas! <laughs> Everybody knows Santa's real name is Saint Nick. But you may be surprised to learn the real St. Nicholas was born here, in what is now the town of Demre in southern Turkey, almost 1,800 years ago. His statue still stands in the center of town, where he served as bishop and acted like a saint. His present-day successor, Bishop Chrysostomos, is revered here too. Once a year, he holds mass in the church where his famous predecessor was buried. And there is an icon of St. Nicholas in every Greek Orthodox church? Yes, of course. But old St. Nick is nothing like the Santa we know. Those stories are fun, the bishop says, and they would be even more fun if I was a child and had gifts coming my way. So how did St. Nicholas go from a real-life Christian saint to a fairy tale figure, from a Greek Orthodox bishop to a toy maker with a staff of elves and a team of flying reindeer. Well, much of that happened in America. So the history of the modern Santa Claus. So Santa Claus is an, a Frankenstein amalgamation of various historical figures and twisted with a flavor of capitalism. Mostly Karl Marx, though. He looks a lot like Karl Marx. Oh, yes. Yeah, spitting no, image. Oh, Karl Marx is way more attractive than Santa. Yeah. Fuck yeah, that dude is swole. Yeah. So the first and most prominent influence is St. Nicholas. I'm swole. So St. Nicholas was born 280 A.D. and has been the main inspiration for Santa. He, was, he didn't look like Santa, though. He was Greek, he was tall, he was skinny, he had olive skin, and he had little to no sense of humor. Um, he became the arch... Sounds like me! Oh, yeah. I'm not Greek, though. He became the Archbishop of Myra. And he was an angry, fiery man, and he helped persecute Christians and participate in Bible burnings later in his life. Cool. Um, two stories kind of gave him the reputation of being a gift giver and being associated with children. Um, one, he gave three bags of gold to a father wh- whose three daughters a were... Father? Be- a father? Whose a three- father. <laughs> a father. A father. A father and a father. father. Yeah. <laughs> whose three daughters were being forced into prosecu- prostitution. Like you do. Yeah. So he gave them three bags of gold so the daughters could afford to pay a dowry to, quote-unquote, marry good husbands. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. Uh, the second story is where he Don't bought... Don't like that. <laughs> Because yeah. they probably weren't actually getting um, yeah. stolen or whatever. They were probably going away for love. And yeah. then the they couldn't be in charge of their own body, so they'd have a man yeah. be in charge. Of- okay, sorry. Off you go. Sorry. Oh, yeah. That's another episode for another time. Yeah. So the throwing gold to the father, and apparently one of these gold sacks landed in a stocking that was drying by the window. Uh, apparently that <laughs> was a thing. Gold sacks landing in a stocking is the name of your sex tape. Oh, goody. <laughs> Um, Goldman Sachs, what? Uh, okay, maybe. Yeah, yeah he's just know. getting a bailout. Is that what was going on? Yeah. Probably. Okay. So that gave him a reputation as a gift giver. And the second mm-hmm. story is where he got the association of being a patron saint of children, where apparently there was some murderer in his town that murdered three boys and put them into wine barrels. And then he popped those wine barrels open and brought them back to life. Oh, good God. Saint Nick. Wahoo. Off you go, Saint Nick. Yeah. Um, eventually, <laughs> eventually, like the other parts of his life about him persecuting Christians, burning Bibles, that kind of started fading away. And what message brought with him throughout history is his gift giving and his association as being a savior of children. It became associated with, with uh, the holiday that would become Christmas someday. Um, America knew in the 1600s, we learned in our 1600s episodes that the first town was... Uh, was started in America in the 1600s. Yes. Um, the Protestants thought that St. Nicholas was a bad omen, so they tried to stamp him out because they thought that St. Nicholas violated the first commandment, thou shalt not have any other gods before me, and have worshipping any kind of saint was against that. So St. Nick was nearly stamped out. But in the 17th century, a couple other historical figures popped up in Europe that kind of brought St. Nick back into America and back to the world. 
Um, this was the English Father Christmas and the Sinterklaas of the Dutch. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So Father Christmas, he started around the 1400s and it was widespread by the 17th century. So he was he was all over the place by the 1600s. Oh, I see it. Um, mm-hmm. After the English Civil War of the 17th century, a propaganda car- pe- campaign started using a personified version of Father Christmas as the symbol of the good old days. Mm-hmm. And that propaganda campaign was wildly successful. No shit. Yeah, to the point where Father Christmas became associated with Christmas, with that time of year. And it, it wasn't so much about gift-giving and, and uh, like pandering to children. It was more about partying. Father Christmas was the father of merrymaking. And in those days, merrymaking meant inviting over your all your friends over for a drink, getting and drunk. Fucking. Oh, yeah. Maybe orgies. Sure. That could be a thing. That, Did the, somebody say orgy? Orgy <laughs> seems merry. Yeah. Can you... Can, can I come? Yes. 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 Multiple times, even. Yay! <laughs> yes. How do you know? <laughs> well... We can. As, oh, this is getting really weird. As <laughs> having people, our genitals are primed to becoming more than once. <laughs> yes. Why our orgasms are not as satisfying. What a warm, fuzzy, holiday comes conversation. Everyone comes according <laughs> to Mr. Sky Clash. <laughs> I want to, one day maybe I'll host an orgy. <laughs> Yeah. Y'all be invited. You're not expected to come. <laughs> <laughs> well, then what's the point of going? Right. You know what? I'm gonna come for the. I'm gonna come for I the gotta snacks. Come. As yeah. long as there's cucumber salad, you know that's gonna be. <laughs> um, I'll come for beers. <laughs> I want cucumbers now. I maybe hate some. You. Maybe some I'll nice sharp as the cheese photographer. on a nice stiff cracker. That'd be nice. <laughs> um, <Yeah>. Sinterklaas <laughs> was the other <laughs> component that made the modern day Santa Claus. Uh, he was a he was a direct evolution of Saint Nicholas, and he brings some of the things with Saint Nicholas with him. So, Santa Claus is celebrated on the name day of Saint Nick on December sixth. Uh, Santa Claus wears a red pope hat, which I learned is called an alb. Uh, alb. He, he rides a white horse. He has a red stole and ruby rings, and he holds a gold shepherd staff. And he has a black slave with him called Zarte Pete or Black Pete. Now, p- modern day people who center who celebrate uh, Sinterklaas, um, they say that he is soot co- covered, or he is um, dirty from it's like working on the so office, hard. When he's like, yeah, when he has what's his face? Yeah. Well, I'm it's drunk, it's sorry, like sorry. Cinderella. Yeah, but like, like. Cinder. Like, they like to separate themselves from colonialism, but the countries that celebrate Santa Claus, like, were just as knee-deep in colonialism as anything else. They, they hate black people, too. Yeah, yeah. Like, they had they oh. had histories with slavery as well. And, like, this tradition continued anyway. And, like, to this day, like, hundreds of people will dress up in blackface to celebrate this. It's yucky. Oh, yeah. Do better. Um, don't... don't Dress up in blackface. It's 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 uncool. it's not no no. Yeah. It's just no. But you we could be like prime it. minister one day though. Yeah, okay, that was yeah. yucky. Also, Wait, but also it what occurred. what year about are we talking about right now? Right now, they did it like this year. Like I saw yeah. pictures, videos oh, yeah. of oh, it. Oh yeah, this right, year. Yeah, they always do it every year. Like yeah. houseboats full of hundreds of people all in blackface. It's it's yucky. <laughs> Most Western Yuletide traditions are variations on a theme. In the United States, we have Santa Claus. In England, it's Father Christmas. And in the Netherlands, it's Santa Claus, who shows up in late November by boat from Spain. Rather than elves or reindeer, Santa Claus's helpers are a bunch of white people in blackface, all with the same name, Zwart Piet. Fans of Black Piet defend the uniquely Dutch tradition that's now huge business. It's children's fun. It's not blackface. He's just Santa Claus's white friend who fell down the chimney and got soot on him. A whole lot of soot. And just on his skin. And not on his clothes. <laughs> they claim it's not racist. Nederlanders are far too progressive and tolerant for that. Well, here's the Dutch Prime Minister in 2014. It is not green peat or brown peat, it is black peat, so I cannot change that. Mm-hmm. This is an old tradition, and uh, I can only say that my friends in uh, the Dutch Antilles... The Dutch Antilles refers to a mostly black former colony. They are very happy when they have Sinterklaas because they don't have to paint their faces. And when I'm playing for black peat, I'm for days trying to get off 
um, uh, the stuff in my face. You heard that right, folks. Mark Ruta, a man liberals all around the world cheered for defeating the far-right politician Hert Wilders in the 2017 election, said he wears blackface. Many Dutch think Sinterklaas and Zwarte Piet go hand in hand. But Sinterklaas existed for hundreds of years before he got a blackface helper during the height of slavery. Like England and the United States, colonialism, slavery, and the myth of black inferiority are part of the Netherlands' past. And in the 19th century, racially charged caricatures became popular entertainment. Britain has tried to leave the gollywog behind. You won't find a minstrel show on a marquee anywhere in the United States. But in the Netherlands, white Dutch people have gone to extreme lengths to keep black people black and to silence the concerns of Dutch people of color. Police have blocked, beaten, and pepper sprayed anti Zwarte Piet protesters. And United Nations officials have faced threats after urging the Netherlands to abandon Black Piet. Dutch parents say Zwarte Piet has led to children of color being bullied in school. For many, Black Piet sends a toxic message. To be loved and accepted in Dutch society, you must be like Zwarte Piet, bumbling, goofy, and ultimately inferior to your white neighbors. In Amsterdam, at least, Zwarte Piet's have finally been changed to soot colored Piet's and somehow the children still seem to enjoy them. There's so much about Santa Claus celebrations that are great, but if the Netherlands wants to actually live up to its progressive image, the holiday blackface needs to go. So Santa Claus was known to put money in children's shoes, or at least that was the legend. So parents started putting presents in children's shoes as presents from Santa Claus on December 6th. Um, and he brought that forward to be kind of added to the modern Santa. Um, what was that? What was that line in the office? I love this hog, hog mama. What? It's. I'm pretty sure it's. I love this hog mama. Oh boy! Someone uh, yell at me if I'm wrong. That sounds familiar, actually. That, that, yep. that sounds like something from a Christmas ep- from a yep. Christmas episode. Yep. Yeah. He does the Dutch Pennsylvania Christmas. So again, like surprisingly, pro- like. Propaganda from back then has a stake in solidifying the modern idea of Santa Claus. So, in a book called Saint Nicholas and His Servant, um, the modern day Santa Claus was solidified. And he was solidified as dropping presents into chimneys on the back of a gray horse. Sweet. Yeah, and he got influences writing that book from Odin. I am one eye. I am also called highest and true gesture. I am Grimnir and the Hooded One. I am All Father, Gondlier, One Bearer. I have as many names as there are winds, as many titles as there are ways to die. My raven, my Yugin and Moon in thought and memory. My wolves are Fakie and Gary. My horse is the gallows. I am So Odin, like the the father god of the Norse pantheon, yep. flew on a white horse Sleipnir, who had eight mm-hmm. who had eight legs. A daughter or son of um, Loki. Loki. Oh, um, yes. uh, Loki is in fact uh, their mother. Mm-hmm. Um, he is accompanied by two ravens, H- Hugin and Mugen. Uh, those ravens would spy on his worshippers of Odin and report would report good and bad happenings back to him. And that kind of got co-opted into the modern myth yet again. You better not shout. You better not cry. You better, you better not what pout, pout. I'm, I'm telling you why. Santa Claus is coming to town. So freaking creepy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, so from these influences, from St. Nick, from Father Christmas, from Odin, modern poets and artists created Santa Claus from existing figures. In 1809, Washington Irving booked Knickerbocker's History of New York, depicted Santa Claus in a flying wagon, smoking a pipe, with gifts for good children and switches for bad children. So in 1809, this book kind of solidified the modern image of Santa Claus from all these different figures. You can also see Ood smoking a pipe too, though. Oh, yes. Um, And just so you know, you were not hallucinating there i was still humming <laughs> in 1821 a poem depicted showed saint nick a saint nick like figure devoid of any religious symbols symbols dressed in red and delivering gifts to children in the late 1800s a political cartoonist um put a 
a series of political cartoons out there about Santa Claus. And again, they told of his modern image, riding in a sled with reindeer, going down chimneys. These were all things created by like artists and cartoonists. Um, things added in that political cartoon was the workshop, elves, the sack that he carries toys in, reindeer, uh, him being an old man and having a white beard. Um, so it was all well and good while the artists were just having fun with their depiction of Santa Claus. In the early 1900s, up to the 1920s, um, Santa started endorsing certain products. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, yep. The most popular and remembered is Coca-Cola. But yep. back in that oh, yeah. day, he sponsored laundry detergent, coffee, toys, even firearms. <laughs> yeah. Santa would shoot your fucking ass with this shit. You're going to yeah. shoot your eye out. Yeah. yeah. And uh, like capitalism, I love that movie. <laughs> capitalism started kind of like taking advantage of the Santa system because the reality is if you have a figure that apparently delivers toys but does not actually exist, then you have a pressure put on parents to buy one set of toys for them and a second set of toys for Santa Claus. Yeah, fuck that. I hate that. And if you're a good advertiser, if you're a good person that can speak to the public in a convincing way, you can put pressure on them to spend more. Always Coca-Cola. <laughs> <laughs> Coca-Cola Santa Packs, the only real holiday refreshment. Look for this display at your store. Holiday refreshments like we bring. A wrap of Santa Pack, it's always a real thing. Well, and I like that the night before Christmas, I think, actually gave the reindeer their names. Yes. Mm. On Dasher, on Dancer, on Prancer and Vixen, on Comet and Cupid, and Donner and Blitzen. And top all of the of fourth, the top of the wall. And don't dash forget all of, you know, because they say that in the song too, you know, all of the other reindeer. All of. All of. I'm pretty yeah. sure that there's yeah. like yeah. several yeah. children. All, all of the other reindeer. Probably. I will, I will. I'm sure I'll read it. I will report but back. But that's a different song. That's when they gave Rudolph his name. Rudolph wasn't mentioned in the night before Christmas. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's why Rudolph was a Rudolph is his own. Yeah. Rudolph well, the so Red-Nosed Reindeer. You know. reindeer. Well, reindeer. let's go into Rudolph. Rudolph was created by the advertising department of Montgomery Ward, Ooh. which was a clothing company. Um, they did it, and they also had uh, like sectors that were starting to creep into journalism, and they wanted to drum up more sales in their journalism department. So they made up the story of Rudolph and published it in their papers. And they told people to buy it so they could get information to tell their kids about this new reindeer coming to Santa's troop. And it worked. They sold 2 million papers when the regular amount sold was 50,000. Gross. Jeez. Yep. Wow. Um, Christmas decorations, something that didn't really exist. Um, there was some degree of it in certain pagan rituals where things were hung on trees as offerings. But the mm -hmm. formalized versions today where you have these metallic, almost like jewel sparkling like ornaments made of glass and sometimes expensive things, mm -hmm. that was a modern invention. And the advertisers and capitalists started putting this thing forward that you have to dress your house up for the holidays. Like, putting up a tree wasn't cutting it anymore. You had to get lights. You had to decorate mm -hmm. it. You had to hang, hang tinsel. You had to buy an elf on a shelf for the corner. No, <laughs> thank you. Yeah. We bought elf on a shelf and a pickle. cereal today. Yeah. I have a pickle. Yeah. Actually, we're putting a pickle. We found a cat toy pickle, and we're going to put a pickle on our tree for our seven oh cats to find. <laughs> because we love our cats. Well, I mean, see, like, my, my Christmas tradition has changed a lot from when I was young. Now it's me and my mom stay, watch a few movies, have Chinese food for supper, then in the morning have Denny's. Like, that's our whole Christmas. The one tradition we have regarding decorations is she buys usually one ornament and one, like, house decoration. Okay. Um, even Black Friday, which is, of course, a, like a, an invention from advertisers and stuff. <laughs> okay, fuck Black Friday. Yeah, by giving people a select date to buy presents, you pressure certain groups of people to buy more presents than they normally would. Yeah. Um, over the years, it's resulted in a 380% increase in Christmas purchases since the and introduction of Black Friday. 
Oh yeah, there's been lots of deaths associated with mm-hmm. Black Friday Yucky. as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah. Even candy cane, cakes, and candy. Candy didn't used to be associated with Christmas and goods and cakes and pastries and all that, but bakers and candy companies started advertising in the 1960s because they really wanted Christmas to be associated with treats and cakes and sweet things. And again, it was wildly successful. Uh, Ten years after these advertising companies started um, pressuring the public and indoctrinating the public to associate Christmas with sweets, they saw an 800% increase in sales. So it was highly lucrative for them. Shopping mall Santa started in 1841 and have been going to this day. Why do malls keep on doing this? Why do they pay a bunch of actors to sit in a mall all day? Um, Usually those actors keep the profits for whatever photos they take. It's because they saw an increase in sales every time they brought one of those Santas to a mall. Mm -hmm. People came in, they would do shopping anyway. So that's why malls keep on doing it. Um, sometimes it can even double or triple sales on any given day if you bring a Santa Claus in. Not with my son. Oh, yeah. He's and never sat on Santa's lap because yeah. he's scared of it. And it <laughs> Hope to keep it that way. <laughs> isolated is- incidents still happen. It's been it's been mostly discouraged and because uh, it's against advertising laws. But before those were heavily influenced, like department stores would give instructions to these Santas, telling them to advertise products directly to the children. Oh, oh wow. Yeah, to tell their parents to go get this when you're done sitting on my knee. Oh, my goodness. Oh, yeah. I don't remember that ever happening to me. Uh, yeah. That is creepy. A yeah. tradition we're all participating in. Christmas cards didn't used to be a thing at all. Now, because of advertising and like corporate masters manipulating us into believing cards are associated with Christmas, is now a multi-billion dollar industry. Okay, but also join our Christmas e- oh, card yeah. exchange on the Discord. I, oh, yeah. I um, well, by will the time this sending... airs, it might be a bit late. Okay, we're fine. <laughs> well, join next year's. Join next yes, year's. Join next yes. uh, we may do another holiday and gift I... card exchange at another time of the year. Yeah. yeah. Valentine's? Card exchange. Valentine's exchange. We should do a Valentine's thing. We should oh, do yeah. like a, not a secret Valentine's, just a Valentine's card exchange. And we just give, send Valentine's, send Valentine's to everyone. Everywhere. Like the, those old tacky box Valentine's yes, that you would get, yes, like Scooby Doo yeah. and Powerpuff Girls. And, and like uh, Tiny Tunes. And I choose you. I choose you. Um, I'm excited for the Christmas. I haven't decided what I'm going to paint, but I'm going to watercolor everyone one thing. Yeah. I'm going to make everyone like some sort of like, I'm a big nerd, so I like to make like my own body stuff. So, so I'm going to make like, everyone lip stuff, I think. So things like cookies, Christmas dinner, elf on a shelf, Christmas parades, wrapping paper, uh, buying trees, gingerbread houses, all these things either weren't originally associated with Christmas or were purely invented to be associated with Christmas, all for one purpose, selling products or increasing sales. And it's become heavily indoctrinated. Um, And it has devastating effects on poor families. Um, If you're poor and you can barely afford one gift, how do you tell your kid that Santa Claus apparently doesn't love you as much as the rich kid down the street. I said that. That's why we need, you know, Santa, you know, to be, you know, brought back to its Marxist roots, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Well, or or standardized, like everybody's entitled to free candy canes from Santa. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And Christmas at its core used to be about sharing merry, getting together with your friends, feasting, getting drunk, enjoying each other's company. Um, Later on, it became associated with gift giving, and there was nothing really wrong with that, people exchanging gifts for what they want. But then, I guess, capitalists saw an opportunity to put it into overdrive, and they started to put more and more pressures to, you know, build that shopping list of things you have to buy in order to participate in Christmas, and that's been going on for a while. I do have a hard time telling my mother that I don't want anything for Christmas because I, I'm, I'm poor and I need stuff. Yeah. <laughs> so so just as kind of like a bittersweet way to end the episode, that's kind of my capitalistic rant against Christmas. Um, what do you guys believe about lying to children about Santa Claus? It's really tough now that I have a child who wants to be into Santa Claus. Like he, I think he literally believes that Santa's a thing, even though we've like never talked about it as a family. Yeah. I mean, like, I don't know. Like, it sucks. It's hard and it's shitty. I mean, growing up, I believed in Santa Claus like vehemently. Like, you couldn't convince me Santa wasn't real. 
Um, until, you know, logic kicked in. <laughs> um, Critical thinking. Exactly. Um, I, it, it didn't traumatize me when I found out. So I, I say as long as there's no harm in it, I, I, I guess I see the pressure from poorer families and you, you can raise your kid not to believe in Santa and I don't see any harm in that. No. And I I think if you want to raise your kid believing in Santa, let them, but have a discussion with them about, you know, how some other families can't afford things. and. Um, I... I think uh, telling your kids to bu- that Santa belongs is a type of uh of uh thought reformation or thought or brainwashing in a way so don't do it i don't like it it's so hard Kate, like it's we've, so we've, hard we've been like yeah. so yeah. like why but why do like you believe in that yeah because yeah. i don't want to be like no five-year-old adorable child you're fucking wrong yeah. No, but it's, it's all like, me. But society no. is brainwashing, like even kids who don't. I, s- I see it's, the negative in it. It's really hard. But That's growing hard. up with Santa Claus, it brought me so much joy. Right? Yeah, Kate. I stopped believing in Santa when I was five because I could read when I was five. Right. And I overheard my father talking to my grandfather on the phone. They're like, oh, yeah, I just gave her the old li- li- Linux, which was a, the brand of the microscope that I had gotten. And I was like, I can read. Mm-hmm. So that, like, yeah. I stopped believing in Santa when I was five, but I kept faking it until yeah. I was eight and it sucked. And it oh, yeah. No, I, I, like, I, there's never been a conversation in my house about, like, Santa doesn't exist. We've just all kind of been like, eh. yeah. I don't yeah. remember ever a time where I, where I did believe in Santa. Like, I probably stopped believing in Santa around, like, eight or so. <sighs> I, but your parents were your parents like pushing Santa on you? No, I was. No? Santa was never pushed, but Santa was also never discouraged. Okay, Santa was talked about, but it was never really pushed. Actually, you know when I, uh, my grandma, when I realized was when my grandma made me something and she signed it as Santa. Oh, but goodness. it was a clearly grandma made <laughs> sweater. Right. That's oh, yeah. like yeah. when it solidified, and I would have been yeah. like six or so. I, I'm with right. Sprout. I did fake it for a while too. Yeah. Like I, I didn't believe in Santa. I was, I was, again, logic, critical thinking. Yeah. Um, but it's just, it's fun to play along. And me and my mom still joke like, oh, here we put out our stockings. Like it's just fun part of the tradition. And like, I still put out cookies and stuff and it's kind of lame at 27. I'm still playing Santa, but we, we know, we both know like the yeah. gifts are from it's her. Like, Thank you, mom. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it, it, but those are air quote santa gifts and and it's like, just fun yeah we we still put out like we still put out our stockings and my mom but my mom's take she she used to still wake up in the middle of the night and fill them up but now she just like fills them up when she wakes up yeah <laughs> well like we still have stockings and stuff at my parents house too but like i don't know how to i don't know what else to do with my kid see I, I like the idea like in i don't like lying to him like i like the idea of you know still putting all the gifts or lots of the gifts underneath the christmas tree on christmas morning but they're like mom and dad put them there yeah, yeah. but you that's also, all of our gifts we've never given him yeah. a gift from santa ever mm-hmm. i i remember when i realized santa didn't exist and didn't the thought that didn't occur too long after that was what else are they lying to me about like, it just started off this fundamental distrust where I realized that my parents had kept up this charade for years and years, and they put a lot of time and effort into it. And it made me immediately wonder, what else could they be putting that amount of time and effort into to trick me? Yeah. I don't want to ruin it for you, yeah. but the tooth fairy doesn't exist either. Oh, no! I tell you, I haven't been getting good exchange for my teeth in a long time. <laughs> 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 Even his adult ones are falling out. Mm. He's collecting them under his pillow, waiting oh, yeah. for someone to come get them for money. I was thinking if I could make a big enough pile, I can get like a dinner plate sized gold coin. But I know. had <laughs> I had seven teeth removed at once. Like oh. my my second molars and whatever were impacting and then growing out the wrong way. And yeah, I didn't get any sh- anything for that shit. I got like swollen face for about a month. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> Oh. Yeah, I'm just thinking I'm just going to keep on not discussing it. How about the kids. Easter Bunny? We just don't discuss any of that stuff. Does the Easter Bunny exist? The Easter Bunny scared the fuck out of me. I don't know why. 
Uh, like a big fat dude from the North Pole breaking in, leaving presents. That didn't scare me. A giant rabbit shitting chocolate in my house. I was. I locked my door. I hid under my bed every and Easter. And laying that, eggs. I think I saw some like. I think I saw some horror movie with like a giant like cannibalistic rabbit. Oh I think that goodness. got in my head when I was a kid. You should look up like really old Easter Bunny photos oh, or whatever, because yeah. some they of the costumes are, are very grim and very creepy looking, and the things of nightmares. Yeah, like mm-hmm. this is that thing is stealing, gonna uh, j- uh, just about to steal that si- child's soul, like <laughs> seconds before disaster. I'll steal everyone's soul. Yeah, yeah. no, thank you. <laughs> Alrighty, um, if you would like to write in and tell us your opinion, do you think we should lie to kids? Do you think we should keep up this Christmas? And what should capitalism? I do with my son? Yeah. You need to talk into him. You do. What should I do with there my son? Go. You do you. You bring do. him over for a weekend. I'll tell him all the secrets it's of life. Oh. All the secrets. All the. Yes. No. All right. <laughs> go see <Jesus>. with Uncle Ude. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Love you, buddy. I'll teach him how to change a tire. <laughs> And hey, well, how to I yell at birds. We all know how to <laughs> what change else a tire there? and yell oh, at birds. Check your tire pressure. I know how to do that, too. How to find a lost remote. Does your son know angry. how to change a tire? How He's to roll a joint five. with a machine. <laughs> well, that's what Uncle Luke's going to teach him. Sorry, uh, how to hold a flashlight in that case. Yaksumayish! Already, that's <laughs> that's all I got. Uh, so, for a happy holiday edition of Colte Veritatis, I'm Ud Gallifrey. Sage Murray, so confused. Let me know what to do with my son. And I'm Richard Bigley, wishing you a happy holiday, a happy uh, Gregorian calendar New Year, and a, uh, I don't know, Merry Christmas if you're into that. Mm. And any other holidays of this season that may apply to you. So there you go. Hanukkah, and Festimus, whatever Festivus you want. Festivus is another yeah. one. You all. I just thought of a really cool like, palate cleanser. If you that get we that, could hit me up. <laughs> just thought of a palate cleanser we should record just really quickly. But anyway. Let's do it. Let's do it. Can okay. we record it? I'm in. Well, I was thinking for this episode we could do like sing happy birthday to baby Jesus or yeah. something. Wouldn't that be? <laughs> happy be birthday, birthday, Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> well, no, like the birthday song. I know. Yeah. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear B. Jesus. Happy birthday to you. But not really, because history hey, is inaccurate. Could Jesus, well, could you just talk to if the Jesus priest and tell him to stop touching person? kids? Yeah. If Jesus was just actually a real person, he would have been born in the middle of the summer. Do me a solid for Christmas. Tell your priest to stop molesting children's baby Jesus. That'd be great. <laughs> Happy you, birthday. Baby Jesus. Who else was an uh, uh, awesome uh, figure that was born on December 25th? Sir Isaac Newton. Mm-hmm. I was going to say that. And also in studio, Squishy. <laughs> <laughs> And, and Sprout. Last but not least, Sprout. Okay, over hey. and out. Love Happy holidays. Bye. Don't, bye. don't get in a fist fight with your Trump uncle. Unless he's a fascist, then you can punch no, him. Okay, I give you permission to get into a fist fight with your Trump uncle. Bye. Punch Nazis. Bye. It's not his fault he's indoctrinated into the Trump cult, but it is his <laughs> fault because that's dumb. Yeah. If they're fascists, it's their fault. Oh. Yep. <laughs> Already. One more down. And next episode will be our 100th case covered. It might be a milestone. It'd be an interesting one to listen to. But to play us out this merry episode, we have one of the first recordings of The Night Before Christmas, read by Harry E. Humphrey in 1914. See you in the after show. Was the night before Christmas, when all through the house not a creature was stirring, not even a mouse. The stockings were hung by the chimney with care in hopes that St. Nicholas soon would be there. The children were nestled all snug in their beds while visions of sugar plums danced in their heads. And Mama in her kerchief and I in my cap had just settled our brains for a long winter's nap. When out on the lawn there arose such a clatter, I sprang from my bed to see what was the matter. Away to the window I flew like a flash, tore open the shutters and threw up the sash. The moon on the breast of the new fallen snow gave the luster of midday to objects below. When, 
What to my wondering eyes should appear but a miniature sleigh and eight tiny reindeer. With a little old driver so lively and quick, I knew in a moment it must be St. Nick. More rapid than eagles his course as they came, and he whistled and shouted and called them by name. Now Dasher, now Dancer, now Prancer and Vixen, on Comet, on Cupid, on Donder and Blitzen. To the top of the porch, to the top of the wall. Now dash away, dash away, dash away all. <laughs> As dry leaves that before the wild hurricane fly, when they meet with an obstacle mount to the sky, so up to the housetop the courses they flew with a sleigh full of toys. And St. Nicholas, too. And then in a twinkling, I heard on the roof the prancing and pawing of each little hoof. As I drew in my head and was turning around, down the chimney St. Nicholas came with a bound. He was dressed all in fur from his head to his foot, and his clothes were all tarnished with ashes and soot. A bundle of toys he had flung on his back, and he looked like a peddler just opening his pack. His eyes, how they twinkled. His dimples, how merry. His cheeks were like roses, his nose like a cherry. His droll little mouth was drawn up like a bow, and the beard of his chin was as white as the snow. The stump of a pipe he held tight in his teeth, and the smoke, it encircled his head like a wreath. He had a broad face and a little round belly that shook when he laughed like a bowl full of jelly. <laughs> he was chubby and plump, a right jolly old elf, and I laughed when I saw him in spite of myself. A wink of his eye and a twist of his head soon gave me to know I had nothing to dread. He spoke not a word, but went straight to his work and filled all the stockings, then turned with a jerk and laying his finger aside of his nose and giving a nod, up the chimney he rose. He sprang to his sleigh, to his team gave a whistle, and away they all flew like the down of a thistle. But I heard him exclaim ere he drove out of sight, Happy Christmas to all, and to all a good night. <laughs> Hello, occultists. Ood Gallifrey with the After Show. I hope you liked our funny little sh episode about Santa Claus and the controversies that surround the holiday he's involved with. You know what? There's a lot of holidays in this season. We all kind of celebrate in a mishmash together of cultures and peoples. And I just want to thank as many as I can. So here we go. Have a blithe body. A Merry Christmas, a bombastic Boxing Day, a handsome Hanukkah, a pleasant Pancha Ganapati, a feet-testing Festivus, a humorous Human Light Day, a yummy Yule, a laughable Life Day, a keen Kwanzaa, a harrowing Hog's Watch, a cheerful Chalice, a swell Saturnalia, a delightful Dong Z festival, a stellar solstice, a nerdy Newtonmas, a helpful Hegmane, and if I didn't mention something that you celebrate, then happy holidays all the same. This is Ud Gallifrey telling you to have a wonderful winter December gift giving. Xmas, Christ, Jesus, Sacrifice, Hanukkah, Holiday, Time Off, Double Pace on some days, Boxing Day, Capitalism Festival. Love you all. <laughs>